Hey everyone, welcome back. So in this tutorial, we are going to try some of the methods of our hash map. Now I'll just create two hash maps first. So this is our first hash map that is student map one. I'll just import the hash map class. So here we are going to have some ID as the key and a student object as the value, right? Now let's add some key value pairs to this map. Let's say two, one, and three. So this is our key, which is some ID, and this is our value, which is a student object, right? Now, similarly, I'll create another hash map that is student map two. And again, I'll add some key value pairs to it. Let's say four, three, and five, right? And now I'll just display the content of both of these hash maps. Okay, so I'll say student map one, and then I'll display the content by using a for each loop, right? Now I'll just import the map interface. Okay. Now similarly, I'll do it for student map two. So this is for student map two. Okay. So we have created two hash maps and we have displayed the content of both of them. Okay. Now the first method which we are going to try is put all. Okay. So I'm just going to say student map one dot put all student map two. So this will put all elements or all key value pairs of student map two into our student map one. Okay. And after this, I'm just going to uh, display the content of student map one again. Okay. Just to see if it has added it properly. Okay. So I'm just going to display this statement student map one after this particular operation. And then I'm going to print the content of student map one, right? Now, as you can see over here, I've updated the log statement compared to our previous tutorials. Okay. So this makes it more readable, right? So we can know exactly what is happening over here, right? Now let's save this program and run it. So this is our map one. This is our map two. And this is our map one after performing this operation. Okay. Now we have a common key value pair in both of these maps. Okay. So if you look at this particular key value pair, then it is present in both student map one and student map two. But if you look at this result, then it has not added this uh, key value pair twice, right? So it is working as expected. So what happens is our operation over here is basically trying to put all key value pairs from our student map two into our student map one. So when it will try to put this particular key value pair to our student map one, this key is already present in, in this map, right? So as a result, it will just override its old value with a new one. Okay. So in this case, the old value for key three will be this particular student, which is present in map one. And the new value will be this student, which is present in map two. But over here, since we have the same student uh, in both, both the maps, we are not seeing any difference over here. Okay. And also if you look at the insertion order, then it is not maintained. Okay. So the insertion order for student map one was two, one, and three, but over here it is one, two, and three. So even the insertion order is not maintained. Okay. So our hash map is working as expected, right? Now the next method, which we're going to try is contains key. Okay. So I'm just going to print a statement contains key. So this method checks if a particular key is present inside our hash map. And if it finds a mapping for that particular key, then it will return true else it will return false. Okay. So I'm just going to say if student map one dot contains key three, then print this statement on the screen. That is student map one contains the specified key else student map one does not contain the specified key. Okay. Now let's save this. Now, if you look at the hash map, then in student map one, we have this particular key. Okay. So it should return true and display this statement on the screen. Now let's run this program. And yes, it is working as expected. Now the next method, which we are going to try is contains value. Okay. So here I'm just going to display contains value. So this method checks if a particular value is present inside our hash map. Okay. So it works similar to our contains key method. So if it finds a match, or if it finds the value that we have specified in our hash map, then it will return true else it will return false. Okay. So here I'm just going to say if student map one dot contains value 
and here I'm passing a student object. Okay. So if this returns true, then display this statement on the screen, else display this statement on the screen. Okay. Now let's save this program and run it. So even in this case, it is returning true. Okay. So if you look at our student map one over here, after this operation, then it is having this particular student inside it. Okay. And as a result, it is returning true. Okay. So it is working as expected. Now again, guys, it is working fine because we have overridden the hash code and equals method in our student class. Okay. So just remember whenever you are dealing with custom objects or custom types, just make sure that you are overriding the hash code and equals method. Okay. So yeah, that's it guys. Thank you for watching and see you in my next tutorial.